The Christian Association of Nigeria has rejected the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Karma 2020, because it would sniff life, snuff life out of the church and rank the church as a secular institution under secular control, Khan says. President Muhammad Buhari had on August 7th signed into law the Companies and Allied Matters Bill 2020. And the bill, which has been passed by the National Assembly, replaced the 1990 bill, and the Christian body described that as satanic. Sections of the law which empowers the supervising ministers to suspend trustees of an association, in this case the church, and appoint the interim managers to manage the affairs of the association for some given. And the presiding bishop of the Living Faith Church Worldwide, David Oyedepo, had also advised the federal government to expunge the part of the law that gives the minister the power to remove the board of trustees of churches without recourse to the court. Khan, in a statement signed on Thursday by Adebayo Oladeji, Special Assistant of Media and Communications to Khan President Samse Ayokunle, noted that the federal government has declared war on the church if it moved on to implement the law. Joining us to make sense of this is Pastor Mike Adeyemi of Christ Abundance Life Ministries in the UK. Good to have you, Pastor Mike. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you very much. All right. Now, the, the biggest conversation we are having now is the Christian Association uh, kicking against the Kama Act. Now, please try, let's try and just suppose how churches are regulated in the UK and that of our country here in Nigeria. Right. Uh, in the UK here, things are, are quite different. Uh, I mean, as far as 1859, you have what is called the uh, Charity Commission that regulates the uh, that charities inclusive of churches. Uh, any church registered must have to go through the Charity Commission and um, it uh, overlooks the affairs of the finance and the trustees that are involved. In fact, before you uh, appoint any trustee as a church or as an, uh, a charity organization, you must uh, have to make sure that the charities, uh, trustee members have people that can be trusted, are people that have... Uh, uh, I mean, there are certain criteria that needs to be looked into. So they run the affairs of, of the church in terms of uh, every year you have churches submitting their annual report and final share. If you earn more than £5,000 per annum, uh, you're subject. It's mandatory that you have to declare your account for the year. And that goes through them every year. They look into it. So they run the affairs of the church. And that's been going on for ages. Uh, in Nigeria, I think it's quite different. Uh, it's not been what, you know, the way you see churches run in Nigeria is quite different in terms of, like, you have general overseers who do their, their stuff. They do things the way they, they feel they should do it. Uh, and something like that, which has been going on for too long a time, and especially uh, with the government uh, in place. So it's, uh, they're quite different. I don't see that happen. Uh, happening uh, in Nigeria as we do have it here in the United Kingdom. At least our church, our ministry here, uh, has been registered for over 20 years. Mm. And um, before you start at all, it's something you have to look into. If not, you'll be declared an illegal church. And I don't see that, I haven't seen that uh, happening. Yes, we have a CAC where you register your church, but not a corporate body, uh, uh, whether ministerial or non-ministerial uh, government uh, body overlooking into the affairs of charities or mm -hmm. churches in Nigeria. I mean, that's quite interesting, uh, the clarity that you're bringing into the conversation. The, the term for uh, illegal church will be quite foreign for, you know, churches in Nigeria. Now, the major bone of contention is, you know, Section 839, 1 and 2 mm -hmm. of the law, which empowers the supervising minister to suspend trustees of an association, and in this case, the church, and appoint the interim managers to manage the affairs of, you know, the association. Now... Yeah. Akan, the Christian Association, describes it as satanic. Would you recommend that that should be expunged? Uh, well, to be honest, it, it looks at, I look at it from two, uh, two dimensions. I would say no, because if there is a body that is going to regulate uh, the church, it brings sanity into the church, and it makes people to uh, be on their toes, sort of, you know that you are being watched. You have been mm -hmm. monitored. And the Bible says that we are meant to be light of the world. So 
if I have nothing to hide, yeah, no problem. You know, anybody can come in and see what we do. Look into our finance, look into our accounts, look into, in fact, there are people who are not Christians and they, are, they have a high level of integrity. Okay. They don't even believe at all. They, they are not Christians, but they believe in integrity. So in other words, if we as Christians portray ourselves to be light of the world, and we want people who are non-Christians to know that truly integrity is part of what we believe in as a church. So if they are going to do that, then that could be an avenue through which they know that, yes, the church is what it is, that in terms of uh, integrity, we are okay, we are fine, we are not troubled by anybody coming to see what goes on, there is no hidden agenda, we preach the gospel, and it's the truth, that's it. Mm. So, but the other part of it, which I do not agree with, is the fact that, because here in the UK, yes, we do have charity commission that regulates the body, uh, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, uh, when you talk about trustees, uh, they don't just come in unless there's something serious and uh, there's something that uh, is a bit of a concern, which uh, red flags have been raised up, and that will like, okay, they come in and try to find out what's really going on. So, mm. and it's always on a fair play. So they, they take time to make sure that they look into it without any biasness. So that is that. But it, so the problem uh, we are going to have in Nigeria, if that's going to happen, mm -hmm. is that do we have that same uh, level of, um, of uh, trust that the government, when they come or when anybody comes, they look into affairs of the church, is going to come with that same mind of, um, of, of clarity without mm -hmm. any biasness against the church? I mean, that, that that's really takes me to my next question, which is that some people already believe that the major problem is a lack of trust, you know, from these church leaders, you know, with the government. And the statement from Khan explains that it is not afraid of being regulated, though. Now, the question is, how do we strike a balance if, you know, we have nothing to hide, like you have said, and if we trust the government, how do we come to a place where, yes, we are happy, so to say, and move forward? Well, to strike a balance, uh, I think, to be honest with you, uh, well, I'm talking from a distance, but I'm a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it, the, the government has to come to a level whereby people can trust the government. You know, the, the people can, like here in the UK, yes, you know, there's, that, there's a lot of things going on that when the government decides to do a thing or come into a church, then, I mean, people don't raise eyebrow because... They know that the government is coming with clean hands. Mm -hmm. With the, they, they, there must be something that has triggered it off. So, but in Nigeria, uh, well, I'm not a politician and I don't intend to be one. But looking at things going on, you know, especially we have the issues of Boko Haram, how uh, Christians are being killed, and you know, there's a lot of eyebrows being raised all over the nations of the world. You know, from the UK, people look from a distance and they said, "Do you really have a government?" You know, I mean, is this a way of uh, expunging the Christians? Is it a way of exterminating the Christians? So, in other words, and they haven't seen anything yet to say, okay, to show that the government actually is ready to back up the Christians to make sure, you know what, we will support you. We will make sure that we eradicate this. So, with that, it's going to be difficult for the church to trust the government. Uh, say, okay, now you want to come in and see what we do as a church, but other matters that do affect the church, that do affect Christians, we haven't seen any acts that shows that uh, there is a, there's a desire to, to make sure that the government uh, looks after the Christians, the believers. So as a result of that, now coming in to say, okay, you want to look at this other aspect? No, that's going to be a sharp no from the church. And to be honest, I'm not surprised mm. that we're getting such a reaction from the church. But like we earlier on said that, yes, I don't believe any Christian church will be afraid to say, okay, come and see what we do. But the, the, the question is, with the government, can the government be trusted? Mm. You know, looking into the affairs of different things, how things are being handled, I think the church is not really happy Look, looking at the way things are being handled, like the example I've given about Christians being killed in, in, in Kaduna, in, in, in different places in the country, and we haven't seen anything, even from outside the country, we haven't seen anything tangible being done by the government to show that, yes, we will stop this, we will make sure that Christians are no longer killed. So mm. that's going to be the problem. So to strike a balance, now there must be a trust from the government and it's not going to be just with this, but it has to start from the angle of the things that matter, the, 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 the cries of the church, 
the, the, that they have been echoing and, and shouting and crying and saying, look, can you do something about this? Mm -hmm. That when the government actually decide to say, okay, we're going to do something and people can sincerely, genuinely see uh, the, the, the government inter, you know, intervening into the affairs of the church in that aspect, making sure that people are protected, the church is guarded and protected, showing interest in, uh, in the ongoing of the growth of the church. Then when it now comes into the issue of, okay, appointing trustees uh, to come and look into the church, then there will not be any problem mm -hmm. because already they are showing that, yes, we do care. But without that, to be honest, it's not going to happen. And I don't see it happening. It's going to cause another uh, fracas between the church and the government. All right. And if we push the conversation a bit further, uh, there are you know, others who are the uh, school of thought that um, the government wants to gag the church you know, from criticizing the, the government from bad policies and you know, challenging them from all the things that we don't completely, you know, Nigerians don't completely agree with. And this is just a way to shut them up, for lack of a better word. What's your thought on that? You see, this is still back to the uh, previous uh, uh, topic we were talking about. You see, this is what happens when people lose trust in anything, in any government, in anybody, in any person, in any situation. So once trust is lost, suspicion uh, uh, will be in every aspect. You want to do this, people will just misread you, misunderstand you. Yes, the government might have a good intention. They might have a pure uh, uh, intention towards this. It might be, okay, well, we've had so much about the church. We've had so much about uh, people mishandling finance in the church, uh, people uh, misspending and, and things like that, you know. But like I said, uh, if the other issue is not resolved, you know, there's still going to be that uh, mistrust. Yes, it could be. Yeah, they, they can misinterpret and say, yes, well, we, we haven't seen anything positive from the government uh, regard towards the church. So mm -hmm. therefore, this could be another. And I mean, like uh, you said that uh, the I mean, Khan Association did say, okay, well, this is an ungodly or a devilish uh, uh, way of the government trying to attack the church. Yes, they will uh, interpret it in that way, just simply because they haven't seen support that they expect. You know, I could remember, you know, in the past month, uh, can actually have made a lot of attempts. You know, I remember there was a time that one of the chairmen of uh, 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 Sublocal uh, Christian Association was killed. And, you know, people made attempt. And we, I mean, we from a distance, we haven't seen anything substantial, you know, to show that really uh, the government cares. So they may care in other ways, but it's not yet known to the people. Mm -hmm. So therefore... This issue of people thinking that, yes, well, maybe this could be uh, another way of the government trying to, uh, to guard the church uh, so that they won't say anything against the government and anyone that does that, you'll be in trouble. So, yes, they might rightly uh, be interpreting what exactly uh, is in the mind of the government. But at the same time, it might not be the truth. But truth be told, things have to be uh, done and changed from the side of the government to show to the church that they do really care concerning the church. Mm -hmm. If I let you go, I'm just imagining that, you know, some pastors and religious leaders would be really conflicted at this point. You know, when, in, when they want to look at this reality and they're saying, no, we don't want to do this. And then in reference to the Holy Book where it says, you know, respect authority, constituted authorities. How do you recommend that they resolve this dilemma? Yes. I very much believe that uh, we should respect uh, I mean, the government that are in control because it's God that puts them there. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Nobody comes into government. Nobody comes into government. No government is established without God knowing about it. So that's what we believe, and that's the reality. So having said that, I would say uh, that as a church, yes, it's a matter of dialoguing with the government. I said, look, you know what? We respect the government and we are ready to do what if the government think that is a way forward. Yes, we're not afraid. You know, we, there's nothing suspicious about us. Our hands are clean. And so, but all we want to say is, and I believe there's always that room in any nation where there's civilization, you know, there's always a dialogue between the government and the people. You know, because, I mean, democracy, people say, is a government for the people, by the people. Uh, so, in other words, there is always that people uh, people interaction, there is that cordiality, there is that forum 
through which man, I mean, I, I, I mean uh, people can sit down, uh, appointed representative of the church through can, can sit down with appointed representative from the government and say, look, this is what is happening concerning this uh, uh, section 839, Act 1 and 2. So we, can, we, can we just come together and can we come to uh, an agreement? And so, okay, yes, we respect what the government is trying to do, but from that, we also need this, the government to do this, to do that, uh, for us to, uh, to be safe, to know that, yes, we are in uh, a good place and, of course, we are ready to go ahead. And I believe if that is done, there will be uh, a way of uh, reconciling things between the government and the church. Right. Pastor Mike Adeyemi, thank you so very much for your contributions on the breakfast. And do keep safe out there. All right. Thank you. Right.